Welcome to another video of Precalculus with Mr. Wharton. Let's uh, get going here with operations with functions. It is uh, very important that we pay attention. I don't know why I'm doing that accent. I, I was going to try to do it the whole video, but that, that wasn't going to work out. Um, yeah, that was a terrible thing. I don't know even what country that was supposed to be from. I don't know. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, operations with functions. Uh, we're going to talk about comp composition of functions. These aren't bad. Uh, they're a little bit difficult to understand, kind of some domain issues, but in reality, it's not terrible. Uh, you just got to kind of know notation. So f with a circle with open on it, uh, g. This is f of g. Okay. This is this means f is composed of g. Okay. So you can say it as fog, but it's really not fog, even though it looks like a, the word fog. What this means is that if I have the f function. And then inside of the f function, I actually have the g function. So this is f of g of x. All right. And the same thing over here. It's not golf. It's g is composed of f. So f. So it's g of f, which is of x. Okay. okay. So this one here is going to go inside the g function. And then this one here is going to go inside the f function. So we'll get to those in here in a little bit. We'll start talking about some domain and domains. Uh, kind of get going here, but so these are the two given functions and What I want to do is I want to find the value of f of g of 2 and then the g of f of negative 4 So this is the same they mean the same thing They're just in different order and then the third one is just f of g and we'll talk about that one That's the probably the most important one here So f of g of 2 means I'm gonna take the inside piece, which is g of 2. I'm gonna find out what that is so g of 2 is just the square root of 2 okay because I put 2 into the x function or into the x there and it's just now uh, the square root of 2 so then I'm gonna take this piece here and then I'm gonna plug in f of negative 2 into the f function so that's the square root of 2 squared minus 1 well when I square a square root I get what's inside so 2 minus 1 so that equals 1 so that is your answer there. So this would be f of g of 2 equals 1. And so that's what I'm looking for there. g of f of negative 4, again, these mean the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to take the f of negative 4. I want to find out what that gives me. So that's negative 4 squared minus 1. You see I'm plugging the negative number into the parentheses with the squared on it. Please do that, otherwise you're going to get negative 16 and it's going to be wrong. That equals positive 16 minus 1, which is 15. Then I'm going to take this, is because that's what that equals, I'm going to put this into the g function. So then it's g of 15 equals the square root of 15. I can't do anything with this, so that's really my answer. So I don't want to write it that way. Let me, uh, let me erase. Oops, I didn't want to erase the whole thing, but that's okay. So it'll be g of... Uh, oops, 1, 5 is equal to the square root of 15. And then it's g of f of negative 4, okay, is equal to the square root, not the terrible square root, but square root of 15. Cool beans. And you can write it like that, it doesn't really matter, but uh, any, any way you want to write it there is fine. This last one is probably the most complicated because now we've got to start talking about some domain. So previous sections basically said where domain was is the x values, right? Now, what we're going to have to do in this section, <coughs> and for some other subsequent sections, is we're going to have to restrict the domain. Restrict. I can't spell today. So restrict means, according to the functions, we're going to have to uh, have different numbers that they can or cannot be when I'm putting them in. Okay? So here we go. Um, so in this case, the g here, all right, is well. Let's let's do the, let's do this piece first, and then we'll get to the domain. So I'm going to plug g into f. So because I don't have any numbers here, I'm going to take the g function. I'm going to plug it into f. I'm going to put it into f, which is the composition piece. So it's going to be f of the square root of x is equal to the square root of x squared minus one, which is just oops x squared minus 1. So this is f of g of x. That's basically what the composition of those two functions are. 
So that's pretty easy. But if I look at the domain, okay, you got to look at these partly when they're in their first pieces. So not when you put them together, it's kind of separate. So if I look at the G piece here, what can G not be? So what numbers can I not plug into G that would make that work? Well, if I think about square roots, if I think about that, that means I have to take the X number and it has to be greater than or equal to zero, okay? Because the number inside cannot be negative. So it can be zero, but it cannot be negative. So because it's greater than or equal to zero, I am now restricting that domain such that when I plug into the answer that at the end, it'll make more sense, like it'll actually allow it to happen because I can't plug negative numbers into this function, okay? So the x squared minus one here, I don't have to restrict that at all because there's nothing there that would cause like a, a bad number to pop out. Like, so these are the instances where bad numbers happen. The square root of a negative number equals bad, okay? When you have a, a fraction, a over b, and b is equal to zero. Whatever b is, it could be a x plus one equals zero, and then you gotta solve and so on and so forth, okay? So those are bad things. Square roots being negative and denominators being zero. Those are always bad, we gotta watch out for those. So let's go on to the next piece. Okay, so here we go. We have two more functions, 3 over the x squared minus 5, which is f of x. g of x is square root of x minus 2. So I want to find at values. So the only time I really care about the domain piece is when I'm evaluating it at x. If I'm evaluating at a number, I don't really care about it because that number will either tell me if it exists or does not exist. And we'll get to that example here in a little bit. But let's go there. Let's go put g in. Let's put 2 into g. Okay, so this is g of 2 is equal to the square root of 2 minus 2, which is equal to 0, right? Square root of 0 is just 0. And then I plug in 0 into f, which gives me 3 over 0 squared minus 5, which is equal to just negative 3 fifths. So the f of g of 2 is equal to to negative three-fifths. So that is this that one. That was a pretty easy one. Uh, this next one here, let's do it first and then we'll figure out the domain. So this I'm going to put g into f, right? So g into f. So it's um, the f of the square root of x minus 2 is basically going to go into wherever x is. So it's 3 over the square root of x minus 2 squared minus 5. So that equals 3 over, over what? Well, the square root squared is just what's inside, so that's really nice, minus 5. So that's 3 over x minus 7. So cool, cool. That one works out pretty good. So what does this mean? Well, so there's my function, and then I want to find the domains of everything, okay? So <clears throat> if I look at this piece, when it's square root, I care about what's inside. So x minus 2 has to be bigger than or equal to zero, right? Because it can't be negative. It can be zero, but it can't be negative. So this means x has to be greater than or equal to positive two. So that is my domain for this function. This other function, I would just take my denominator equals zero, right? It cannot equal zero, so I'm finding out what numbers it would give me that would equal zero. So if I did that, I would get x squared equals five, and then x equals plus or minus the square root of five. So that would be my domain for this function. Every number except those two plus square root of five or negative square root of five. But when I'm talking about composition of functions, all I care about is just the g. All I care about is just the g of x piece here. So we know the domain has to be x is greater than or equal to two. But now, because I put it into f, I also need the domain of the function that it made, if I have any. And so the function that I made was 3 over the x minus 7. So what number, if I put it into my denominator there, would give me 0? x cannot equal 7. Okay, so I have d, uh, the domain is x or greater than or equal to 2 and x cannot equal 7. So this is an inequality domain, right? But if I want an interval no domain, 
then I would go like this. I would say, okay, 2, 2, 7, not included, right? So it cannot equal 7, so it's got to be not included. Union, 7 through infinity. And this would be the interval domain, okay? And this is the inequality domain. Both of them are the same. You could write them either way. Please make sure you understand what instructions are asking you. <clears throat> this one, the last one here. So this is like, I'm going to put G, I'm going to put zero into G there. Well, if I plug zero into G, I get the square root of a negative two. Well, I can't have a square root of a negative number. So this answer is just does not exist. Okay, I cannot do it because that doesn't work. So that's what it means where if you plug in a number, it will tell you if it works or not. So I plugged in zero, it doesn't work, so it just does not exist. All right, decomposition of functions. What this means is I have a function, h of x, already written. So h of x, in this case, I have them already written. And I want to decompose them, basically write functions that could make them up if I were to use the f of g of x or the f of g of x, right? Fog, okay? So if I did these, if I did f of g of x, I want to, whatever I get here, I want to end up with what h of x is. So how do I do that? So I want to look at what types of like grouping symbols are there. So remember, grouping symbols are like square roots or absolute values or parentheses or uh, like logs of stuff and stuff like that. So in this case, I have a square root, okay? So since I want g of x first, g is what goes into f, right? g is what goes into it. So I'm going to take what's inside of this grouping symbol, and I'm going to say that's my g of x. So it's x to the third plus one, okay? So this is going to go into my square root, but how do I make it so that it's the same thing? Well, that means that my, my f of x has to be just the square root of x. Because now if I did f of g of x, I would put the square root or the x to the third plus 1 into this, which would give me the square root of x to the third plus 1, which is equal to my f of g of x, which is also equal to my original function h of x. Okay, you have to kind of manipulate it a little bit so that uh, you can play around with what is going to happen. So the second one here, the 1 over x squared plus 1, think about the denominator there is the grouping symbol. All right, so g of x now is going to be x squared plus 1. That means that my um, f of x piece is going to be 1 over well, how can I plug this in? Well, this has to be x, right? So if I did f of g of x, then I would plug this into that, and it would give me 1 over x squared plus 1, which is equal to my h of x, which is what I want, okay? So we've got to kind of look at it and pay attention and kind of manipulate the functions around a little bit. Um, do not, do not use just x for every one of them. Okay, don't say, oh, this is x and that's, well, this is 1 over x, right? This is the square root of x. Those are different than just saying, oh, it's just x. Because I could have done this. Like on this one here, I could have said, okay, well, g of x is just the square root of x to the 3 plus 1. Oops, that's a thing got stuck there. Square root of x to the 3 plus 1. And then I said x is, or f of x is just x, right? Then I can plug that in, and then it would be the same. I don't want that. I want different crazy functions, okay? I don't want x to be a function. I want like 1 over x, or the square root of x, or the absolute value of x, or stuff like that, okay? I don't want um, that there, please. Do not use x at all. Bad, bad. So it's operations with functions, and I've add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and I have just different notations that I can use. So it's f plus g of x. That means the same thing as adding. You're just adding them up. We'll get some practice down here. We can say it's f of x plus g of x. Or we can say it's f plus g of a number 2, right? So we can say that as well. And that doesn't really matter. All of it's the same. For subtraction, the same thing. I can say it's f minus g of x. 
I can say it's f of x minus g of x. That's the same. They're both the same. Or f minus g of some crazy number like negative 3.7. Okay? When I multiply, I can say it's f times g of x. Uh, there's just a couple here. I'm just going to make sure some notations here. Or I can say it's f times g of x. So like they're multiplied together by next to each other. I could also say it's f of x times g of x, all right, or f of g, or yeah, or f of f g times, let's see, of, of I don't know, 2.62, okay? That just means, again, um, they're being multiplied with g being that and then plugging that in and so on, Okay. Uh, division, division, well, it's the same thing as f over g of x, or f of x divided by g of x, or again, f divided by g of, say, 3.2, okay? Um, that's all that means. I just want to make sure you understand notations before we move on, because on the bottom, uh, that's what we're going to get to. All right, operations with functions. This is kind of what we're headed to. Uh, F plus G. Basically, I'm going to take just F, and I'm going to add G to it. So that was pretty easy right there. So it's 2 plus X squared, or 2X squared minus 1 plus uh, 3 minus 5X. I'd get in the habit of putting these in parentheses just to be on the safe side for when you do the subtraction later on. So now I'm going to order these. So it's just 2X squared minus 5X plus 2. The domain. I look at the both of the functions. With operations of function, I look at the both of them and see if they have any problems. 3 minus 5x doesn't have any problem. 2x squared minus 1, there's good. Every number you put in, you get a good number out. And then your final answer as well. So the domain for this one, you can write it two ways. You can write it as negative infinity to infinity, or you can write it as the capital R with a double bar. I rhyme like Dr. Seuss. Uh, F times G, the same thing. I'm going to take 2x squared minus 1. I'm going to multiply that by 3 minus 5x. Let's uh, let's figure out what to get and multiply. You get foil or box or however you need to distribute. So I get 6x squared minus 10x to the third minus 3 plus 5x. I'm going to leave it that way. I don't really care if you put it in order. Um, you know what? I'm going to put it in order just so you can get the hang of it. But negative 10x to the third uh, plus 6x squared and plus 5x minus 3. There is your, I guess that's your better answer per se. The domain, again, nothing here, nothing there. When you multiply, um, that those are good there. There's nothing that makes it zero or causes it to be negative when it doesn't need to be. So again, you have negative infinity to infinity, or you have your double bar with the capital R. Uh, F minus G of X, this is where I was talking about the parentheses might come in handy. So I'd get 2X squared minus 1 minus 3 minus 5X. The negative here just distributes. Some of us will forget to do that. Please don't do that. I get 2x squared minus 1 uh, minus 3 plus 5x. Let's order 2x squared uh, plus 5x minus 4. That is your full answer. When I'm subtracting, again, there's nothing that causes issues here or here or in my final answer. So the domain for this one, again, is all real numbers. So negative infinity to positive infinity are or the double bar with the capital R. Or the capital R with the double bar. I don't know, whichever one sounds better. F divided by G. This one is going to be okay when I separate them, but when I divide them, that, that's going to be the issue. So I get 2X squared minus 1 over 3 minus 5X. So separately, these are okay functions. G and F are okay. But when I put them in division, the denominator cannot equal 0. So I have to solve and find out what that number is. So 3 minus 5x cannot equal 0. So negative 5x cannot equal negative 3. x cannot equal 3 fifths. So you can write this two ways. You can say the double cap or the capital R with the double bar. And then you can say x cannot equal 3 fifths. Or you can write it as interval notation and say, okay, it's negative infinity to three-fifths with a open parentheses union open parentheses three-fifths to positive infinity so you can do it one of two ways all right last one's here uh we're getting to the end remember when i'm evaluating it at a point i do not care about domain so this doesn't need to be there 
So this is f of 2 plus g of 2. So f of 2 is just the square root of 2. Can't make it any easier than that, square root of 2. g of 2 is the square root of 5 minus 2, which is the square root of 3. So my answer is just the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3. That's all you can do there. Now I'm dividing. Now this is where your domain is going to come into play. So I get the square root of x divided by the square root of 5 minus x. So I have three pieces that i got to check. This here, the square root of 5 minus x, which is g of x, this has to be greater than or equal to 0 because I cannot have a negative number inside a square root. So when I solve that, I get negative x is greater than or equal to negative 5 divided by negative, so I get x is less than or equal to 5. Remember, when I divide by negative, the sign flips. In the f of x piece, what can this not be? Well, this can be all real numbers bigger than or equal to 0. Can't have negatives in there as well. All right, so now, so we're good there. Domain for those two are good. So we're going to leave this up here. We're going to leave this one here. So what now happens? Well, now when I put them together, I have another error on the bottom because this cannot equal 0. Okay, so if that cannot equal 0, that means that this isn't really x is less than or equal to 5. It's really x is less than 5. Because if it was equal to 5, it would give me 0, and that's an issue for concern. So now I have my actual domains for each of the individual functions. Now I want to find my domain in interval notation and inequality notation. So let's look at this. what this means here. Here's my number line. Here's 0. Here's 5. 0 is equal to, so that means it's included. The 5 is just less than, so that's not included. So it's bigger than 0, but less than 5, so it includes all of these numbers like that. So how can I write that? Well, it includes 0, but it doesn't include 5, so this is my domain using interval notation. Or you can say, okay, x is greater than or equal to 0, but less than 5. So both of those are answers that would be acceptable. Graphically, these are actually pretty easy. You just got to read the graph. I got a blue and a red or brown or whatever color that is. I have no idea, but I think this one's blue, but it looks good to go. So I'm taking f of 2 plus g of 2. So 2, f is 0, g is negative 1, so it's 0 plus negative 1, which is just negative 1. And then I go to the minus. f of negative 1 is uh, negative 2 minus g of negative 1 is, oops, I did the wrong thing there. So f of negative 1 is 3 minus g of negative 1 is negative 2. So put those together, I get a positive 5. g of 0 is just 0. 0 times 4, right? f of 0 is 4, is equal to just 0. That was an easy one. f of negative 2 is 0. Okay, so that's 0. Divide by g of negative 2 is negative 4, but that doesn't matter. It's still just 0. I'm fogging right now composition of functions, so I'm going to take whatever the g of 3 is. g of 3 is negative 1. Then I'm going to take f of that negative 1. f of negative 1 is 3, so this is equal to just 3. And then now I'm going to take these functions and add them up. And how do you do this? The best way to do it is to make a table. So x, y, t-chart. I'm going to take where the function exists at. They exist at negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to add them both up and put them in the y column. And then I'm going to graph it. So negative 2 is, is 0 plus negative 4. So 0 plus negative 4 is negative 4. Negative 1. Well, this is positive 3. This is negative 2. When I add them, I get positive 1. At 0, I get 4 plus 0 is 4. At 1, I get 3 plus negative 1 is 2. At 2, I get 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. And then at 3, I get negative 1 plus negative 5, which is negative 6. So I'm going to take these. I'm going to graph them now. So negative 2, negative 4, right there. 
1, negative 1, right there. 0, 4, way up there. 1, 2, right there. 2, negative 1, right there, right there. And then 3, negative 6 is right there at the end. And here we go, straight line. There we go, straight line. That's a terrible straight line. And straight line. Those are awful. But you get the point. Make a straight line and you're good to go. Uh, I'm trying to use candy here, and uh, we'll see. maybe it won't work. Maybe it will in the future. I don't know. But uh, there you go. There's your straight line. That's all you're doing. You're just plotting the dots and making a straight line between them. Okay? That's for F of or F, 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 F plus G graphically. All right? Any questions? You should be good. But other than that, uh, good luck and uh, deuces.